Hi, readers. I'm Jordan. And I'm Katie. And welcome to Not Another Heroine, the podcast where we break down the best and worst fictional heroines, those swashbuckling ladies who have to work a little harder than expected for their happy ending. This week, we're reading The Elf Tangent by Lindsay Burker, otherwise known as Scary Gumby. Am I starting? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess I get to open this episode. Um, well, I I want to open this episode with a plug for another book because we just finished <laughs> The Stardust Thief. Um, however, I read a book called This Woven Kingdom by, I'm going to mutilate this author's name, yeah. Tahere Mafi. Mafi. It was phenomenal. It also has gin elements in it it's got it's based on persian mythology persian folklore it was so good it was like a it was what my brain needed to recover from the start of the <laughs> and i think <laughs> i think katie read it a while ago long before i did i did is this the one that has the um fire bird in it or like some kind of bird thing oh there's a firefly aspect to it fire okay then i don't think that's the thing i'm thinking of (laughs) maybe that's uh what's the other one it's like a burn the flame or something oh Uh, i know yeah what you're talking about and then there's also the other one uh brass kingdom i think there's like a bunch of them that all came out at the same time there i mean it's so interesting because it's a departure from what we're used to reading Um, yeah so Yeah. yeah check out if you were with us on your review of the Stardust Thief. If you need something to <laughs> stay in the genre, keep some of the same elements, check out This Woven Kingdom. Definitely. And the sequel, I think, just recently published as well. Yeah, I think it came up on my like uh, Kindle and like Goodreads. You should read this next. Anyway, yeah. uh, back to the real purpose of this episode. Yes. Yeah. The Elf Tangent. It's by Lindsay oh, Burker dear. because you can never say your last name. <laughs> <laughs> I can never say your last name. And I was... I was extremely hopeful about this book um, <laughs> last episode. Um, Katie Katie did the majority of the um, <laughs> review slash synopsis for this book for yeah. a couple reasons. That should uh, um, tell you everything you need to know about Jordan's thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I'll restrain myself in it for now. That's Wait fair. till we get to part three and that's where I get to take over. Oh, God. That's kind of terrifying. I'm scared. (laughs) And yeah. Oh, and also just like a little, uh, not a caveat, but like a warning. Um, I'm traveling for work right now. So if the audio is wonky or like the timing between me and Jordan is wonky, like it will eventually get better in several episodes down the road. (laughs) I I won't say how long it's taken us to figure out how to do this remote recording piece that we're doing right now. Uh, but it yeah. was, <laughs> yeah, but w- we found a solution. We hope it sounds great to you all. Um, but if it doesn't, it will get better. We promise. Hopefully. <laughs> Cause that was a, uh, <laughs> you know, starting at three hour uh, minimum to try to figure this out. So yeah. we're both yeah. hopeful. We, yeah. <laughs> We're dividing the Elf Tangent into three chunks. And so this, you know, first chunk, part one, is going to be from chapter one to chapter 13, if you want to read along with us. So if you want to, like, pause right now, get to that point, and then come back, um, that's totally good. And then part two will start at chapter 14, because I feel like that's always kind of confusing. It's like, am I reading chapter 13? Or, like, are they stopping when it, like, gets to chapter 13? Um, That could just be me, because I'm, like you know, filled with anxiety, but, uh, (laughs) yeah, yeah, that's just for, um, anyone listening. So, um, the elf tangent immediately starts out with this sort of kind of like off the wall introduction to our main character, um, our main heroine, her name's princess Aldari Nayirith. Is that Aldari? Is that how you, you pronounced it? That's how I was reading it in my head. Aldari. Okay. Aldari. Um, cause as you have probably 
picked up at this point, we have wonky pronunciations of all of these names. <laughs> no, it's not like we struggle with the English language every single time we sit down to record. Not at all. What are you talking about? <laughs> but anyway, Princess Aldari, she and her snarky but well-meaning bodyguard, Feli, are in this kind of like seedy part of town in a local library. Um, because Aldari is looking for some like specific economic books. That's when it's like immediately revealed that our heroine is like a little bit of a rebel slash like not your typical heroine, which is like, we love that. Uh, but she like secretly um, is writing all of these like economic papers because she's super into like saving her kingdom and like giving her opinion on taxes and like I don't know anything about economics. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, so this is this is cool though because if you remember uh, last episode, I think Katie's plug for this author was that we she always has these very intelligent, independent heroines, and this is something you don't see a lot, which is a math-minded heroine, mm -hmm. um, like especially with this focus on economy. That, yeah. was, that was a neat touch. Yeah. See, I have positive things to say too. <laughs> we'll uh, keep a track of like how many positive versus how many negative comments. <laughs> but yeah, so her uh, father, the king, has kind of like outlawed her from visiting all of these like various libraries um, across the capital city though. Obviously, it's not good to have like your crown princess just like hunking around and doing whatever by herself with no guard. Well, she has one bodyguard, but not like a retinue, but she's really just like doing whatever she wants. Also immediately revealed that Aldari and Theli, the bodyguard, are going on like an imminent trip to the ne neighboring kingdom of mm, Orith. <laughs> Orath. Or Orath. Oh, I think Orith is fine. <laughs> Okay, Orith, um, where Aldari uh, basically plans to wed the crown prince. And I don't even think they tell us his name. No, she's just marrying the prince. The prince, yeah. Which uh, kind of tells you how important of a role he will play in this story. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not the love interest by any means. No, nope, but we'll, you know, we'll get to that. So back in the library, um, Aldari is looking for the specific book. They're going about their business. And then all of a sudden, Theli notices these like two very intimidating elves that walk in and they're like covered in blood and guts and like tufts of fur, which is kind of like a weird thing to read, but okay. Um, and the two... This is in the library by the way. Like, <laughs> yeah, just like a public library and you just have these two like dudes covered in blood walking in like, oh yeah, I'm looking for some books. <laughs> um, and the two guys have like obviously just gone through some shit with a capital S and everything is fine until one of the elves comes up. Uh, this is Captain Hawk of the Moonsword Mercenary Company. And right off the bat, he's like, um, are you Princess Aldari? Okay, pause. <laughs> Eye roll. Seriously. Captain Hawk. Could we be a yeah. little more creative with our with our names here? Yeah, kind of cringy. Because what is um I think we talked about this book and I don't know that you've read it. Um, the one by what is her name? It's like T Kingfisher. Oh, yes. I don't know that I've read it, but yeah. I know what you're talking about. I'm almost positive, like the main character in that book, his name, I want to say is Hawk. Like, I swear to God, and I could be totally making that up and, like, definitely correct me if I'm wrong. But I'm, like, 90% positive his name is Hawk, too. Uh, the number of Hawk heroes I've read <laughs> over the years is countless. I wonder, is that, like, a cause and effect relationship? Like, if you're named Hawk, you're immediately going to be, like, the protagonist in the story? Or is it, like, you are the protagonist because your name is Hawk? I don't know. Maybe we can get an author interview. Yeah. To see what she was thinking or not thinking when she named her characters. <laughs> Not thinking, damn. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. Aldari is a cool name. That's true. I feel like it's easy, well, easy for us to pronounce too. Like we both had the same pronunciation, which is a first, mm -hmm. I think. That <laughs> never happened. <laughs> Not at all. Um, and so uh, they, back to our princess and her bodyguard they're both kind of like immediately have some like red flags because obviously aldari is not even supposed to be out and about and like some kind of scary looking mercenary man has just immediately made her out as the crown princess and so she panics and she's like well uh i'm not the princess but thank you um i'm a librarian it wasn't convincing like okay so <laughs> insert character description here i think aldari is described as this 
kind of strawberry blonde, kind of cute, petite looking princess, Mm -hmm. kind of very fresh faced, maybe Mm -hmm. innocent. Oh, actually, that reminds me. Um, I paid attention at the very beginning of this book because I wanted to like it. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> so when Hawk and this other mercenary walk in, a lot of detail is spent describing what they look like. And mm. I, I remember talking to you like right at the start of this book, which is, oh, Hawk is described as this young 20 something looking elf, right? Mm. Regardless of how old he actually is because he's an elf <laughs> and quote, not much older than Aldari. Mm. And that's usually a cue for the reader, like, oh, this is probably the love interest. Yeah. I but you and mm. I you and I both kind of zeroed in on the other mercenary who was kind of more gruff and like mean looking. <laughs> Immediately. For lack of a better word. Uh-huh. Cause they're like described as like walking in together and you kind of have like, you know, the fresh faced d- captain that walks in. And the other guy is like pissed off to be there and he's like kind of like talking in Elvish or whatever to the captain and he's like what the fuck are we doing here like all in elvish so obviously she doesn't understand but like (laughs) you get the gist from (laughs) just reading it and it's like oh like so who's gonna be the love interest here (laughs) i i was hoping for mr asshole for a while i was like several chapters it kind of leads you on a little bit like you're not sure the whole time yeah and i you know, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but True. just plug for the descriptions that are provided right, right at the start. Like Hawk is this golden blonde young, like too young to be a captain. So he's got to mm-hmm. be somewhat awesome. Or something. <laughs> and then his gruff, angry friend. Yeah. Who kind of matches Thelly, who's the kind of gruff, snarky bodyguard. Uh huh. So just, you know, keep bit, that in uh, <laughs> mind for later. Keep it in your little back pocket. Um, <laughs> and so after she, uh, Aldori introduced herself at the librarian, Captain Hawk is like immediately like, I doubt that. Like, I'm pretty sure you're the crown princess, but um, I'll play along. Uh, can you point me in the direction on a book on whaling? And Aldari like immediately like, <laughs> whaling. I don't know. <laughs> wailing out of nowhere (laughs) there are so many points in this book when i'm like that came out of left field but like okay (laughs) Mm -hmm. and so aldari somehow like doesn't magically know where it is because like evidently the whole kingdom has like a standardized book organization system uh like the dewey decimal system that like all libraries use uh i was just thinking i can't remember the name of our library system oh like dewey decimal dewey decimal yeah. yeah Which is Mm -hmm. kind of funny. So, again, immediately getting distracted. Your thing that you didn't like about this book was, like, the time frame was ambiguous and, like, mishmashed, right? I mean, there are several other things. But, (laughs) yeah, that was a big one. (laughs) Because that – it kind of, like, immediately threw me off. Because we have these, like, arranged marriages, which I get, like, maybe kind of happen in present day a little bit. But – So you have an arranged marriage, probably very standardized, like, roles of women and, like, gender. Yet there's libraries in the capital city, and they have, like, a universal, like, Dewey Decimal system. Like, that was kind of odd. Yeah. (laughs) There were some odd contradictions in the setting, which is, you know, it is fantasy, right? So you're supposed to suspend belief here and, like, just roll with it. But, like, for me... I like consistency in settings. So yeah. If you're going to go with like a Victorian-esque or steampunk-esque kind of things, just carry that through every aspect, but don't like have this raging mafia war in the background with, I don't know, like monsters and mm-hmm. like like you said, arranged marriages, but then stick with this very civilized something we don't see yeah. Yeah. I don't know where I'm going with that, but, but you know. Yeah. Because I just Googled it. And so the Dewey Decimal Classification System um, was first published in the United States in 1876. That's fairly recently. Like if you think about like the spectrum of development of people and things and technology, like <laughs> it's kind of odd. Okay. Yeah. So firearms, right, I, are mm. briefly mentioned as like... One of the invading countries in this world uses oh, fire, yeah. But but none of our main characters, our elven mercenaries, don't use them, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Technology doesn't have to advance like synchro- synchronously mm-hmm. um, across civilizations, but um, 
it just it was weird. It was wonky. <laughs> That's yeah. all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so thankfully Aldari, uh, you know, her country had this universal <laughs> library system, so her cover <laughs> isn't completely blown. Um, except for the fact that, you know, Theli is her bodyguard. And so they have this funny little interaction where um Aldari is like, Oh, this is my sister, like, you know, not weird that we're both librarians. And he says, um, your sister carries a very large mace for a librarian. And then Aldari responds, uh, to appropriately punish miscreants who dog ear the pages or overly crease the spines. And I feel that in my soul. <laughs> I am not a dog ear kind of person. <laughs> Don't dog ear the pages. But creasing the spines, sometimes necessary. Yeah. It, it shows a book is like well read and well loved. Yeah, that's how you know the best parts. Mm hmm. And so we kind of like flash forward after this point, you know, nothing further comes out of it except to some like questions as the reader of like, what the fuck was all that? Um, and so all of a sudden, Aladari is preparing to leave to go to her wedding in Orith. And um, she's stepping out to the sort of like caravan her father prepared to protect her because like Jordan mentioned, there's this like country that's threatening them. And that's kind of the basic or basis of this uh, arranged marriage is that Aldari is going to marry this man in order for that country, Orith, to provide, like, resources and soldiers and, um, like, fighting equipment so that they can kind of repel this, like, bigger, I don't even know if it's named, but, like, this bigger country that's, like, threatening to invade them and take away all their country. Yeah, I think the invading country is, like, this super empire-esque thing that's just trying to swallow all the little countries neighboring it. Oh, just yeah. Keep growing. I have it written. The Taldar Empire. I just had to go down like literally one line in my notes. <laughs> I don't even remember that name. <laughs> That's fair. And so, yeah, we have the Taldar Empire threatening to invade. And so, like, of course, her father wanted to make sure that she was protected on this journey to Orith. And so he has this little uh, caravan put together. But he's like a little bit concerned that even though he has soldiers going with Aldari, that, like, they still might get attacked. And so he has hired a group of mercenaries. Oh. Um, Don't you say. Which one would it possibly be? Weird. What a mercenary company. Obviously the one that Captain Hawk and his grumpy friend belongs to. <laughs> Convenient. But tell me again, what's the name of this brilliant mercenary company? Uh, the Moonsword Mercenary Company. Moonsword. I am trembling <laughs> in fear. She really wrote a whole book and did not give more than like 35 seconds thought to these names, <laughs> which like fair because I mean, sometimes names are like the least important part, but like maybe like a full minute Moonsword. of thought. <laughs> Moonsword led by Hawk. Okay. <laughs> So Aldari is like obviously immediately caught in a lie because she's like, oh, yeah, I'm a librarian, but um, I'm also, you know, the crown princess and I'm about to get in this caravan and you were literally hired by my father to protect me. Um, but that's not important. You know, Hawk really just kind of shows that he thinks it's funny more than anything. Well, I, I think he kind of knew all along, though. Right. Oh, that's fair. I think that was the implication was that, yeah, you're not getting away with it. <laughs> <shit>, but <laughs> I was literally hired to protect you. <laughs> uh, though we get this kind of like weird interaction, you know, after he catches her in the lie. And um, her brother is like hiding under the caravan and they like Aldari and the brother. And I don't really like remember exactly how this interaction happens but they do like some kind of like math problem together as like a you're supposed to be in studies and he's like well i can do math anyways and um he gives her a crazy math problem and she like immediately solves it in her head and all of a sudden like the author kind of describes him getting this like glint in his eye of like ho oh, oh, interesting but then it's never further like explained why he would be interested in her like mad math skills uh, but important for you, dear listeners, that uh, her math skills are important. <laughs> Very important. I won't tell you how long it took me to realize the title of this book and its relevance to math. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> did you just know? <laughs> uh, well, okay. it took me a month and a half. <laughs> That was a live reveal. Um, our, holy our shit. Readers. Like tangent. Like, oh, well. <clears throat> I thought it was just a tangent because like, you know, they're going oh. on a tangent. <laughs> this Yay. might be my favorite part. Well, uh, the tangent. Interesting. That makes sense. Okay. 
So they kind of set off and everything's fine and dandy for the first part of the morning. So like the day that they stand, um, start out until they stumble upon a small village that's like just past the capital city um, that's littered with dead bodies and the bodies of these like wonky creatures that are called Vorgs. Um, and I could not for the life of me like figure out what these looked like. Because she said they're, like, two-legged. But it was, like, a werewolf comparison. Like, oh. a if a werewolf was, you know, a grizzly bear. Mm, okay. Because I, I think I just, like, skipped past the part where they, like, had necks. So I was, like, imagining these little, like, like like a chest chunk thing on top of, like, really long legs. And, like, the face was in the... Yeah. Uh like a Gumby kind of looking guy. And I'm like, that's <laughs> this <laughs> like is really scary fucking Gumby. weird. <laughs> yeah. Scary Gumby. <laughs> um, but no, I guess they're more werewolf-esque. Um, that makes a lot more sense. Thank you for that. Also, can we talk about Vorgs as a name? Really? I, yeah. Because that feels like sci-fi. Because I, yeah. I doubt, you know, people in the, what 1700s to 1800s i think is like vaguely when we thought this might be like taking place as like a comparison where the fuck would they come up with vorgs <laughs> um but yeah so there's like a bunch of dead villagers there's a bunch of dead uh vorgs or whatever and uh these things are super strong and they have long claws and teeth and kind of sound like mildly horrifying um obviously our scary gumby um but uh Everything's like kind of weird and they're like panicking about this until, you know, Captain Hawk waits like a long, awkwardly way longer than it need to be, you know, amount of time to admit that like his company had stumbled across them and like he saw the Vorgs attacking the city and they stopped to handle it um, while they were coming into the palace in the capital city or whatever. And it just like has this very... Um, almost like malicious like undertone like you don't believe him you're like like what actually happened with this like small invasion like you're giving me some like scoop super sketchy vibes um well hawk and his buddy like everything starts out super sketchy with these two yeah right? <laughs> nothing seems up front with them mm -hmm. and that's immediately like through all of their interactions you're like this is kind of wonky like there's something weird going on and so um, the next day, the journey immediately proves to be like totally cursed, um, jokingly, but also Loki probably like totally cursed um, because their group is immediately set upon by terrifying, huge bearded mountain men uh, from the Taldar Empire, who basically like decimate all of the soldiers that came from Aldari's company or Aldari's kingdom. And so the only people left are people from the mercenary company. But these like Taldar Empire mountain men are, you know, immediately defeated by these like strong, fast elves. Um, but all of the like humans didn't make it through the interaction. This is a super violent scene. Like it really is. This book, the book itself is pretty violent uh, for being kind of advertised as this, I don't know, like soft intro yeah. to elf fantasy adventure like <laughs> fun easy more read like no death and monsters every couple chapters yeah but during this fight uh the carriage that aldari and theli um again the bodyguard are riding in is like totally fucked up like i think it gets like yeeted over a cliff and like rolls a couple times and like you know theli and aldari are like bounced around and bruised but it's kind of fun though because during this fight we get like our first look at aldari as a heroine because like surprise Surprisingly, despite, you know, this like nerdy, delicate, like exterior that she has, um, she helps slays uh, one of the attackers. Like Theli is stuck in the carriage and like she can't get like her mace out or something. And Theli like tries stabbing this like mountain dude. And I feel like for someone who is a princess and like is evidently like an economics professor doctorate or something, like she actually tries like fighting someone and i kind of appreciated that that instead of getting this like immediately you know the male character comes in to save her she's like i'm gonna try to stand up for myself kind of appreciated that what i f i mean yes good 
she's a badass princess and a smart one. But what I found was kind of unrealistic was she's never really afraid mm. of anything. Yeah. I think that's a good I mean, point. Because like this would be terrifying. Yeah. Like you were like yeeted off a cliff. Like you're surrounded by, you know, these mountain men. They're killing all of the people that you presumably know because they're, you know, guards in the local force at the capital. And, you know, there's a bunch of elves that you don't really know and everybody's fighting and, like, you got, like, yeeted off the cliff and whatever. Like, yeah, <laughs> seatbelts weren't a thing in no. carriages. Like, they <laughs> should be probably unconscious if they even survived this carriage accident. Yeah, so that's true because she doesn't – she just immediately is like, well, I'm going to try to stab this guy. And, like, if she really was, like, this nerdy economics princess professor mix hybrid, like, you would think there would at least be a little bit of, like, holy – fuck and then like right at the last second she's like oh shit i'm gonna die if i don't do something but um but again so right before they are about to die um captain hawk comes in and saves them and it's kind of interesting because like immediately aldari is like oh my god thank you and like she probably has this like cute little sparkle in her eye when she's saying it like oh my god thank you but it's like barf you don't really know this man like i know he's probably like good looking because like obviously like elf legolas like we went over this already still you don't know this man no and there's no i don't know lingering emotion over the fact that all of her guards were just murdered yeah like yeah like just oh no thank you for saving my life and okay let's let's continue on our journey let's disregard the fact that i don't know 20 30 men were just killed <laughs> not a big like, deal it'll be fine they'll get over it it's okay <laughs> she's a smart heroine yeah and um especially because immediately captain hawk is like uh so super sorry about this but um i'm gonna have to kidnap you and take you to the elf kingdom real quick yeah this is a story of kidnapping um to i don't know revisit what's happened so far started in the library she's supposed to marry a prince she starts out to marry the prince uh mercenaries go with her they're attacked by monsters and oh wait no now we have kidnapping too <laughs> this girl's been completely through. separate from the original storyline uh yeah. yeah she's been through the ringer already and it's been 45 pages maybe <laughs> at this point point. and so it's kind of interesting because like again i think you brought up a good point that she wasn't scared because even in this like she sounds kind of an like angry about it she's like you know i need to go to orith to marry this guy so that i can like save my kingdom but like she's not like scared or upset about the fact that she was just kidnapped by a mercenary company of very strong elves that want her for some purpose that they have not specified yet and she's being taken and she wasn't very <laughs> to like a she wasn't very feisty about yeah. it either like oh you're kidnapping me no you're not kidnapping like if you're gonna battle monsters and survive a like this enormous carriage accident but you're just like okay you're kidnapping me <laughs> okay yeah she didn't put up a fight at all like i was expecting her to like fuck no man and then get like bonked in the head and pass out and wake up or something but there was none of that she's just like excuse me and then it went to the next chapter. And so later, though, Aldari, um, I feel like she's kind of like pragmatic. She's like attempting to butter up Captain Hawk with some like polite conversation because like reasonably like he's an attractive guy and you also want to ensure that he's not going to like murder you. And so maybe it's like a good idea to get on the good side of your kidnapper, but also like some questionable like Stockholm syndrome e stuff going on right now. Uh, but he, you know, because he's actually a good guy at heart, uh, he reveals that he feels bad about kidnapping her, but his kingdom, they all feel bad. <laughs> yeah, they all feel real bad. But it's like, why don't you just not kidnap them? You know, controversial opinion there. Um, but he admits that he needs her help with a problem that his like elf empire has been struggling with for centuries. Not explained any further than that at this point. But um, he promises that he's going to bring her back to Orith um, for her wedding as soon as she like helps them and like everything will be fine. We're just taking a tangent. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Katie, my soul is cringing. <laughs> Oopsie. But so at this point, Aldari is kind of confused, though, because she's like, I have no idea what I could possibly help you with. Like, the only thing I'm really good at is like math and problem solving and like economics. And I don't have any like any kind of magic powers. I'm not strong. You know, what in the fuck could I help you with? 
Um, and Captain Hawk keeps his mouth shut tight about it and he does not mention anything, but he's like, you know, once we get safely to the elf kingdom, like I'll tell you everything, it'll be good. Just like hold up a little bit. Uh, except the next day things are going well until the goddamn Vorgs show back up and, uh, fuck everybody up. Scary Gumby is back. Again. (laughs) Yeah. Scary Gumby part two. And so while the elves are busy fighting these like freaky two-legged dog Bigfoot, werewolf, Gumby things. Um, Aldari and Thelly, though, are like, all right, they're distracted. We're going to like dip out and flee real quick and escape our kidnappers, which props to them because that would be scary with all that going on. And you're like, I'm going to run away and possibly be eaten by one of these Vorgs um, if I make it out. <laughs> and uh, all is going pretty well until that exact situation happens and a Vorg pops out. And it smacks them both from their horse. And they're both getting, like, mildly pummeled. And they're about to get, like, more than mildly pummeled, as in, like, they're going to get unalived. Um, until Captain Hawk saves the day and sweeps in. Oh, <laughs> no, you don't say. <laughs> Whoa, wild. The kidnapper is actually a good guy. Oh, no. <laughs> um, he's battered and bloody, but he somehow, you know, is able to vanquish this Vorg. And he's like, nice try. But you guys are still coming with us to the cursed elf kingdom. Um, and so the next day, yet another uh, psychotic thing happens, as we will soon discover in like five or ten minutes. Um, so, <laughs> oh, uh, interjection here for a second. We haven't really touched on like the whole elf kingdom thing mm. and the role of elves in this world. Um, and it's kind of established pretty clear, like early on that elves are not a common people. Like you rarely see them wandering around. So the fact that these two elves show up in the beginning is kind of weird, mm-hmm. which Aldari focuses on. Like you guys aren't supposed to stray from your kingdom. Like relationships between the human kingdoms and the elf kingdoms are strained because there's this weird, like, uh, how do they describe it? Like battle thing that the elves were like, w- the elves were fighting this weird war on their own and they sought help from the human kingdoms the human kingdoms were like nah man that's an elf thing we're not helping you oh yeah um, so because the elves there's like a rift yeah the elves uh had a bunch of like magic powers and they're like humans are beneath us and then all of a sudden this like bad whatever thing happened that will be revealed later um and they're like humans can you help us and they're like <laughs> no <laughs> uh yeah. yeah so that's that's the background like already tenuous relationship between elves and humans um and then elves who like hawk and his buddy who venture into the human realms are kind of seen as outcasts Mm -hmm. from their kingdom so that's the little sidebar elf history thing beautiful thank you for that jordan you're so welcome (laughs) so um the next day so our little group uh they come upon this large river that separates Aldari's lands from the elf lands um that is like perpetually covered in a deep mist um ooh spooky and um also like a fun side note so during this like little bit Aldari is sitting double on a horse with Captain Hawk she's like angry that she got kidnapped but also she makes like a whole lot of internal like monologue thoughts about how he's hot and i you know uh stockholm syndrome moment here because like if i was kidnapped and i got yeeted off a cliff in my carriage and i got all fucked up and then there's these vorgs and then mountain men and like my whole retinue of guards got murdered and i got kidnapped by elves and i'm being dragged to this kingdom you know and my own country is potentially going to be invaded because I didn't marry this guy. Like, I would maybe not be thinking about how hot my mouth, <laughs> like, kidnapper is. <laughs> okay. So here, let's, this is one of the big issues I had with this book is it's hard for me to buy that she's this intellectual princess type, like, very pragmatic, very, like, left brain I do math. I study economics. I'm like, I write about these things and that's all I care about is doing this thing and making the right choices for my family. And yet she's so easily distracted with like this hot elf. Yeah. Right. Like it's just this weird, I don't know. I don't buy it. Mm -hmm. I don't buy her character. Yeah. Because I appreciate, um, like slow burn, 
them. Like, I don't love the whole like kidnapper trope, but like I get it's a trope for a reason. Um, but I feel like there needs to be more of an internal, um, uh, like conflict for the character or the heroine or whatever that she needs to really be like fucked up over this like dichotomy of that she needs to take care of her responsibilities and her kingdom, but like, you know, her kidnapper is also like a little bit hot maybe, but it needs to be very like complex thoughts and like strife inside and maybe even like, you know, lashing out at the kidnapper because you're like so pissed off that they're like making these complicated feelings instead of just like immediately being like, huh, okay. He's yeah, kind of hot. Just, <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> yeah. It was like an oversimplification of the whole process. Mm, like, Yeah. Which is funny, too, because this book is like 400-something pages. So she had time. You don't have to remind me. I, I felt every <laughs> single page. <laughs> That's fair. But it's weird because there's parts of this that felt drawn out, like, unnecessarily. But, like, that most important part wasn't one of them. <laughs> no. You and I, I think, both really enjoyed the whole slow burn romance aspect mm -hmm. in these kinds of books. And this is just right in your face from the beginning. Yeah. So slow burn, I think, is required when you have a romance that starts from questionable beginnings. Um, like you have to do more as an author to prove to the reader that this is like something that could actually happen and you're not like forcing it. Um, I read like some kind of like analysis or like someone's, you know, book review about that, like the crazier circumstances you have at the beginning. So like a kidnapping or like, you know, uh, the heroine falls in love with an assassin who like killed her dad or something. The more like crazy of circumstances, like the harder the author has to like work to like show them like knowing the real you know, them of the other person and like having like interactions where they like find out they have shared ideals, but you have to like put in that work and this kind of got like glossed over. It's because I think what it does is, oh, if your kidnapper is an elf and pretty and saves you uh, when he's supposed to save you, um, then it's okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Like as long as that's the, I think maybe that's the trope is like, oh, as long as the person is super handsome and you're attracted to them, it's okay if they do bad things. Yeah. Which is dangerous because we all know those like crazy narcissists that are like super attractive, but they're psychopaths. <laughs> yeah. Like Ted Bundy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. So we have a Ted Bundy elf on our hands, but not really. But maybe yeah, not, not quite that bad. <laughs> like we're exaggerating a little bit, but I mean, but still. Um. So anyway, back to our as we talked our about the story. Reached this kind of scary looking river, and on the other side is the cursed elf kingdom. Um. And right before they're about to cross it in this like rickety, um, like steamboat kind of thing. Um, yeah, a steamboat <laughs> arrives in our plot. Come on, talk about like, conflicting technology here. I was expecting some outrage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but right before they're about to get on the boat or the steamboat, um, Captain Hawk is like, "Hey, so I get, and I appreciate the fact that you're like trying to escape. Like, you know, I get it. I would do the same. Uh, just FYI, you should maybe not attempt that right now because there are sea serpents in this river and they crave human flesh. Nice. Awesome. Um, and so with Scary Gumby and sea serpents <laughs> and steamboats and Captain Hawk, it's fun. <laughs> we got like a wild combination of like mm -hmm. characteristics, things going on right now, <laughs> but it's fine. Um, so with that uh, cheery thought, the group gets on the steam-powered engine ferry thing, um, and they set off across the river. And so after a little bit, Hawk, um, you know, asks Aldari to speak privately, and Theli kind of grumbles about this because reasonably, you know, she is the bodyguard for the princess, and uh, I guess this time period, you know, princesses couldn't talk or, you know, have relationships with anyone, but there are also steamboats. Uh, unclear. <laughs> okay, okay, but for we haven't really talked about Theli a lot. That's true. She had more character to me than Princess Eldari did. Like she was more consistent in her role. I could see that, and she was funnier. Like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just relate to that type of character more. 
Uh, but yeah. Because I feel like we, she's, she's yeah. like, talk a little bit about like what, how Feli is as a character. Because I feel like we haven't really talked about her at all. Okay. Feli, kind of a mama bear type of relationship with Aldari, but they're not very, they're not super different in age. Like mm-hmm. it kind of comes across that they've grown up together in the castle Thea or Theli, his I I <laughs> forgot her name was Theli. I thought it was Thea. Um, <laughs> it's just a nickname. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. But so she's always got this very protective but sassy. Like so, she's always going to look out for Princess Eldari, but she's not going to let her off the hook for making stupid decisions mm-hmm. or like going off the deep end with Captain Hawk, yeah. right? Thelly's always kind of in the background as like the conscious to be like, hey, you're the princess, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm here to protect you. Uh, we need to do be- what's best for you and what's best for the kingdom, which I thought you also <laughs> wanted to do, except now you're distracted. Yep. But anyway, Thelly as a character is just, she's got some great one-liners. Mm-hmm. She's got this great like um, kind of snarkiness back and forth with, Hawks number two, who we also don't talk about, but actually has a pretty significant role in the story. Yes. What's his name? Uh, do you remember? I do not. I think it's somewhere else, like down farther in my notes, but um, it comes up soon, I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll wait to talk about him. But <laughs> the number two dude has a huge role from the beginning. Like, and Aldari's always very, like, suspicious of mm-hmm. him because he's like the opposite of Hawk. And he's a dick. The same way that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's kind of an asshole. But it's like the same way Theli is the opposite of Eldari. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're like foils of each other. Isn't that what that word is? Yes. Yeah. Because like I imagine Theli is like one of those friends that's only like nine or ten months older than you, but then like pulls the like doting older brother card and you're like, you have to listen to me because I'm older than you. And it's like, yeah, by like nine fucking months, like we're the same age. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love that bit. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's Theli and Aldari to a T. Yeah. And so um, Thelly obviously is not super excited about Aldari like getting the sparkles in her eye when Hawk comes over and he's like, hey, can I talk to you alone? And like Thelly's like, no, you fucking can't. And Aldari's like, sure, yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, Thelly finally like grumbles and she's like, yeah, sure, fucking whatever, but I'm going to be right here watching. Um, and though we immediately get a little bit of like background world building as to why this whole kingdom is cursed and uh we are also introduced jordan i see you getting mad uh zombies (laughs) i'm restraining myself right now so i'm gonna be real hold it back i so if you look at the reviews on goodreads for this book it talks about zombies and I guess when I was, like, looking at this book before I started reading it, I just, like, skipped past the whole zombies thing. And, like, even when I was reading it, I got to probably, like, 80, 90 percent. And I was like, oh, these things are kind of like zombies. And I was like, oh, like, the Goodreads reviews are talking about zombies. Like, yeah. But um, I will say <laughs> kudos to the character to, to to the author. She did her whole zombie thing very well. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a good spin on zombies. Like if you're going to do it in this setting, that's the right way to do it. Absolutely. Anyway. Yeah. We haven't gotten around to how she how she does the zombies, but eh, I'll let yeah. you handle that. Um, so Captain Hawk basically explains that. Um, so there's these two twins who are like super smart. They're full of magic. They like, you know, are amazing elves. And this is, you know, a couple of centuries ago, unspecified time period. Um, but there is this evil elf sorcerer who's one of the twins. And he kind of like goes off the deep end because he wants to marry the king's daughter. And she's like, no, you're like kind of gross. I'm not into that. I'm going to marry someone else. And he, you know, has like a conniption and curses the whole kingdom. And this curse is basically that anyone that has magic power like internal to them when they're born, if they try to use it, they turn um, into a freaky, scary, like uh, zombie elf-esque kind of thing called the Twisted. And so... um, it like happens at first and then all of these twisted go after anybody that tries to use magic. And so it's kind of like one of those self uh, sustaining ecosystems of zombies and they like feed on anyone that tries to use magic. But magic is also the only way that you can like 
really get rid of the zombie infestation. So you see how the Elf Kingdom is now cursed and is like on the brink of destruction, basically. Um, but they're described as like these freaky, like blue elves with like white, like stringy hair and yellow eyes, I think. And like they're just like fucked up orcs. So they yeah. turn into orcs, is what you're telling me. <laughs> so elf zombies are orcs. <laughs> I mean, in this book, yes, <laughs> but like the whole the whole orc like premise, I think I'm not super well read into that. Is that orcs were elves at one point mm. and then got twisted um, by some magic thing into orcs? So oh. they were weren't always as bad as they were. I think there's a couple different takes on the whole orc lore and how they come about. You know, it's a Tolkien thing, mm. um, but. Yeah, it's the same kind of idea. Interesting. I didn't even know that. Well, the more you know. Um. So anyway, the elf kingdom is getting like fucked up by these zombie elves. Basically, they're on like the brink of destruction. They have like only one or two um, small outposts left where like the king lives. And they're like dwindling in numbers because he's like twisted or like basically hellbent on destroying all elves because the evil sorcerer was a dickhead um and so the evil sorcerer eventually like dies of old age um without undoing the curse but thankfully he had a twin brother who was like this interesting inventor guy um who didn't really care about what was happening to the elf kingdom until all of a sudden he's like oh shit there's a zombie invasion and then he decided to like want to help but um, the evil sorcerer in his like last moments made this like volcano explode and it completely destroyed the workshop that the inventor had where he was like working on a solution. Um, but it's a match. There's a volcano. A volcano. <laughs> really, Katie? I'm not making this up. It happened. It's in the book. <laughs> but yeah, so we have zombies, mm -hmm. volcano, uh, steam engine powered ferry boats, Evil sorcerer, scary gumbies, sea serpents. <laughs> We're not even done yet. This is part one. <laughs> you put it in those terms and it does sound like this book is like off its rocker, but it's actually done like okay. <laughs> let me let let me ask you a question, Katie. Uh -oh. How long did it take you to read this book? Uh so the first part took like a while. Uh mm -hmm. how long is a while? like a couple days and I'm one of those people uh -huh. that immediately screams through books in like four to eight hours. Um, so that's saying something, but I will say towards the end it picked up and I finished it like the last chunk. Um, but it was, it was an adventure. Mm -hmm. Weeks. <laughs> it took me weeks. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's kind of mm -hmm. sad. I will hold this book against you <laughs> till the end of time. <laughs> That's fair. So I love Lindsay Berker's other series. So her one, The Emperor's Edge, is like a steampunk magic like combination. And I'd never really like read steampunk before I read that series. Um, and it's super good. Like the world building, the characters are all like they have individual character arcs which is something that never really happens except in you know like really exceptional books when you have a cast of like a couple characters but that series was super good and then um the other series i think is called like encrypted or something like that again you have this like scientist female heroine who's like also she's like 40 i think in the book so she's like older and she's never been married and she's like fuck men like i'm not really interested in that i had my heart broken but then she meets like this like older like uh i think he's like an admiral or something and they hate each other at first but then they like are like oh i appreciate the fact that you're like smart and like can take care of yourself like i dig the vibes so both of those series were really good um i guess her like pure fantasy ones are maybe not as strong <laughs> I'm not for as much hate as I'm giving this book. I'm not writing the author off yet. <laughs> That's she's, <fair. laughs> she's she's got too many options out there for me to be like, not one and done. I'll just I'll, I'll try again. Anyway, yeah, we're we're off our path. So a little tangent. We have uh, diverged. <laughs> a little tangent. Just a little elf tangent. Just a. L I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys can't see us, but I just death stared at Jordan. <laughs> I think there's two holes in my forehead right now. Tangent. God damn it. 
<laughs> so anyway, magic workshop stuck in a volcano, but um, they have this like team of elf archaeologists basically that have like dug out a gate that like opens up into the workshop and it's kind of their last hope and that's where Aldari fits in because this gate um this guy being like kind of a dick inventor um he made it a puzzle that no one can seem to fucking figure out and so Aldari is like their last chance they're like you're really good at puzzles you're really good at like economic stuff like hopefully you can fucking help us because otherwise our whole kingdom is doomed so this is where Aldari kind of gets her like um, emotional connection like, oh, he's a kidnapper and he kidnapped me. But like, you know, it's for a good reason. And so she's torn because like she has been like this kind of coddled princess her whole life and her father doesn't appreciate like all that she's been doing on like economics papers. And so she's like, this is my chance to be an adventurer and like help this like low key, like kind of hot elf and his like whole, you know, uh, country. Like I could actually do something helpful. And then he said that after he would help me get to Orith so I could like marry this like random prince dude. like. Maybe this could all work out in the end. Um, but before Aldari can like really make any kind of like concrete decisions about how she feels about this whole thing, uh, <laughs> who is that that appears through the swirly, scary mists? Um, pirates. <laughs> 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 uh, the fucking pirates pirates because they haven't experienced enough on this journey. Yep, now we're going to add pirates, pirates into the mix. Uh, yeah. And so these pirates uh, specifically have been, you know, they're pirates that have heard through the grapevine that Princess Aldari was kidnapped by some elves. And lo and behold, there is this steamboat going to the elf kingdom that may or may not have those said elves and said stolen princess on board. And so Theli, bless her soul, um, she sees this as an opportunity. She's like, okay, the pirates are just going to want to get like a ransom money. So like if we get with them, we'll for sure get back to either Orith or like our home kingdom. And we'll be away from all of these crazy fucking elves. And so she straight up is like, she's right here. And then uh, chaos ensues. <laughs> Hold on. I'm reading <laughs> I'm reading your notes here and you just say so that host just straight up calls out to the mist she's here. <laughs> I really that's what happened. Like I mean but I, this is such a <laughs> disservice to Thelly's character that's like the one fair. opportunity she has to take action and like yeah. I I won't spoil it but that's fair because Thelly has kept her like eye on the ball the whole time. She's like, we need to escape these motherfucking elves and get back to our hometown or get back to Orith so we can like, I have one job and you're making this mildly difficult, Aldari, because like you don't really like want to be saved or rescued or, you know, mm -hmm. escape. You, you know, that's the impression I got the whole time of Eldari. It's like, oh, you want to escape, but do you really? Yeah. I feel like that could be, and we'll probably, you know, talk about it more in the Q&A episode, but that could be something that could have been done better is getting more of Aldari's, like, thoughts about how she's, like, you know, conflicted, but she wants to help them because she wants her own adventure. Um, that's, like, the impression you get as the reader, but she doesn't ever say it. No. So that could be a little tidbit, but we'll talk about that later. Spoilers uh, for you. But anyway, um, Thelly's little declaration out into the mist um, immediately starts a full naval battle uh, between the ferry, which is getting absolutely demolished with cannons. Um, and everything's like kind of going like not great, but then it gets worse uh, because one of the pirates plays this like little flute thing and then all of the elves go like real still and they're like, motherfucking pirates, god damn damn it because a sea serpent pops up <laughs> <laughs> and uh the sea serpents are you know arriving on the scene they're ready to mingle and uh by mingle i mean you know fuck up this poor ferry boat uh which immediately gets like yeeted in half and uh Feli and aldari unfortunately are still on board um and are attempting to signal to the pirates to like throw a rope over so they can like jump over to the pirate ship but everything's like really chaotic and uh, the serpent is like double fucking things up and making this super difficult. And it smashes its head into the little like uh, engine room that Aldari and Theli are like hiding in basically. And um, they're about to get eaten until Captain 
I was about to say Captain Hook. Um, Captain <laughs> Hawk. <laughs> but that would be fitting given the setting. Uh, yes. Uh, Captain Hawk appears and he saves them and then is promptly eaten. Uh, like, well, kind of eaten. Um, Aldari is uh, mildly distraught by this because she's like, wait, he's hot. Um, and so she uses this for real. That's exactly <laughs> what she thinks. <laughs> I think that's like verbatim. Um, mm-hmm. So she uses a shovel to smack the shit out of the serpent. Um, but that doesn't really do much because it's a shovel and that's a sea serpent. Um, but, you know, hey, she's trying. Um, and uh, somehow. uh Thelly, oh yeah, Thelly just like is like, okay, nope, there's a sea serpent. She, the sea serpent got Captain Hawk, like we're going to dip out now. And so she's like, fuck this shit. And then the pirates have thrown over a rope and she's like, we are getting the motherfucking out of here. And Aldari, you know, and they successfully kind of like clamber up the side of this pirate boat and Thelly's like, nice, like we have accomplished something that we set out to do. And Aldari is like, and I have some like mixed feelings on, you know, just leaving them. They're all getting like eaten. And, you know, Captain Hawk was potentially monched on by a sea serpent. And the pirates are like, okay, nice women. And uh, Thelly is like, oh, no, <laughs> like these pirates are maybe not the nice kind. Okay. Interjection here. This is a really nice um censored summary of this scene yeah because it gets really rapey yeah immediately they get on this pirate boat and the pirate's like nah like we don't care what shape you're in when we return you and get our ransom money we're gonna take advantage of the fact that you're women yeah evil laugh um like and it's pretty it's pretty graphic yeah um like the way it's described like nothing actually happens to them Mm -hmm. but we got to this scene and i'm like this up until this point this book has played like a made for tv pg-13 fantasy Mm -hmm. like absolutely Um, yeah and then you have these super gory super violent moments and then these super rapey moments um like oh this is this is not for young audiences yeah This is definitely where the rating kind of comes in because there's no like spice really in this book. Uh, But a higher adult maturity level is required. And uh, a lot of it comes from this little tidbit (laughs) and the violence. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But uh, before anything really horrible and illegal can happen, um, Captain Hawk pops up uh really angry (laughs) he is very upset and his whole tummy is like ripped open um by some you know probably very infectious serpent teeth um and he's about ready to fuck up these motherfucking pirates and uh fuck them up he does and uh oh lieutenant setvik is the grumpy guy, uh, the grumpy friend. And so, like, he kind of climbs on board, too, and they totally demolish all the pirates. And Thelly's like, okay, like, you know, I'm kind of upset that our escape attempt was thwarted again, but at least, you know, we were not uh, assaulted uh, slash raped by pirates, so I'm not totally upset. Um, But Aldari is absolutely just is super excited to see Captain Hawk and she gives him weird. a big old hug with like a neck kiss like yeah <laughs> weird <laughs> fucking weird I super just I got weird. like gross creepy vibes yeah. on this one yeah because like uh, so taking out the whole kidnapping aspect for a moment even if this was like you know, they were going somewhere together, like both voluntarily going. And she like did this, like give him a hug and kissed him on the neck. Like that would be weird because like at no point in this have we really gotten any like very forward uh, moments from Captain Hawk. Like he's been kind of like mildly professional the whole time, like maybe like a little flirty, but nothing to the extent that you just like pop him one, you know, <laughs> Like, it was very almost, like, childish yeah. behavior. Yeah. hmm And she's, like, 21, 22? Yeah. But, again, a, like, published economic writer. Yeah. Right? Like, you yeah. see these weird conflicts in her character. Like, 
Yeah. Uh, maybe she's just, maybe her thing is like she's super naive, like socially mm-hmm. naive, mm-hmm. but incredibly intelligent. Like that is a whole character trope by itself. Mm-hmm. But that needs yeah, to be this was talked about though, not just implied. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's kind of a weird reaction to have to someone who hasn't been like very forward in their flirtations with you, let alone with your kidnapper. But um, hot elf got it. Okay. Um, and so she kind of has this whole like internal dilemma thing about like, you know, uh, I need to go save my people. I need to go marry the crown prince of Orith, but also like hot elf dude. So like, (laughs) what do I do? And there's also like this whole adventure puzzles aspect. Um, and that's where we will stop for part one. Um, again, a reminder, this was chapter one to chapter 13. So we finished chapter 13. Um, yeah, so we have encountered, uh, what? So sea serpents. There's, there's a list. Let's, let's list them all (laughs) off. A recap. So let's, mountain men, scary mountain men. Yes. Uh, um, Um, what did we call them? Uh, scary gumbies. Scary Gumbies. Yes. I think we might need to call this episode Scary Gumby. <laughs> Scary Gumby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. Scary Gumby. That's the episode yeah. title. Scary Done. Gumby. <laughs> uh, also known as Vorgs. Yes. Uh, we also got pirates and sea serpents. A uh, steam engine boat, ferry boat. The Dewey Decimal System. Oh, Don't the Dewey Decimal that. System coming in at the end. <laughs> Oh, uh, we and have zombies. some like, elf archaeology <laughs> going on. Oh, too. that's true. <laughs> I love that. That's just like a tangent. Like probably until like the oh a tangent. Oh, a Jesus tangent, Christ! <laughs> I fucking walked into that one again. <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, the whole like archaeology, like archaeological dig, just kind of hangs out in the background until like the very last like seven or eight chapters of this but like they have a whole archaeological dig going on in the background at pompeii because don't forget there's a volcano <laughs> yeah, there's a volcano too um yeah are there any other oh and captain hawk there's a nope there's one more oh what's the last one zombies oh and zombies to just wrap and up zombies. that list <laughs> and zombies <laughs> uh yeah do you want to uh call us out or whatever what is it I'm, what is it called when you like oh sign us off is yeah, that i can the sign right us term off. yeah okay well from our shelf to yours we'll see you on the next page hi readers if you'd like to help us pick our next book send us a message on instagram Or if you'd like to just listen, we post new episodes every Monday on Spotify, Amazon, or Apple Music. Thanks for listening.